So you guys just gonna have to believe me. There's a really cool graphic here, but the the this, the um, projector settings. I think they're just horrid. I don't. I mean, I, I noticed it on your presentation as well. Uh, this is actually like a gray gradient, and there's the logo for a way 3D there on the left hand side, but looks just just looks white. So sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> and all my transitions are based on this thing moving around. So. Well, there goes polishing my keynote, keynote presentation. But I guess you can see the text at least. So uh, this presentation is called Making a 3D Flash Game in 30 Minutes, um, and zero dollars, by the way. Ah, you can see it move, but you don't know what it is. Okay, cool. So um, first, I'm Richard. I am a freelance Flash developer, uh, or at least traditionally that's what I've called myself, but I'm looking back on the past year, I've just done maybe uh, like 30% Flash, 30% uh, maybe C, C++, Python and stuff. Uh, so uh, um, I'm, I'm just gonna call myself a programmer, period, from now on, moving forward. Um, I'm one of the members of the Away 3D core team. I don't know if anyone knows the name Away 3D. Can I see a show of hands? Okay, so maybe some people know it. So uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what that is soon. I am a long time Blender user, of course, in this crowd. Long time maybe doesn't mean the same to me as it does to you, but I've used it for maybe four years, five years, uh, something like that. Uh, but I'm not a professional user in the sense that I don't use it eight hours a day to, to do most of my work. So. Uh, I'm a long time user, but sort of a sporadic user. And there's my Twitter handle if you wanna find me, or whatever. Okay, so uh, this session in 30 minutes, and I did this session or a variation of this session at the Adobe Max conference about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I actually live coded a game in 30 minutes, but I don't think that you guys wanna see me write action script for 30 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna try to focus on the Blender side of what I did uh, during those 30 minutes instead. Uh, so I'm gonna just introduce Away 3D uh, and the Away 3D platform, and then I'm gonna show you how we use Blender or how we allow the use of Blender to create 3D games for, for the Flash platform. <laughs> wow, yeah. So um, a brief his history of 3D in Flash. Uh, before Flash Player version 10, which was the previous version, the previous major version, there was no uh, 3D support at all. Uh, I mean, really nothing uh, that could even resemble 3D. So we had to fake it. Uh, so what we did was we basically drew triangle by triangle ha after having projected it uh, into screen space. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. Um, so Flash Player 10 gave us some, some of it, uh, but we could only really use like 4,000 on-screen triangles, which is nothing. Yeah, but where does that crazy come from? The 4,000? Oh, no, th that's just a benchmark, essentially. Uh, I mean, on, on a sort of a baseline machine, everything's done in software in the Flash Player. Uh, so, we, so we got, I mean, in, in a, an acceptable um, production, you would use around like 4,000, 5,000 triangles. If you try to push it more, uh, most, because we're targeting the web, so a lot of uh, users would not be able to see it in, a, in an acceptable frame rate. So it's just it's completely uh, out of the blue, but it is based on experience. So still though, people used it to do pretty cool things. So this is Cafe World, like a multi-million user uh, flash game on, on Facebook. So that's using Away 3D, which is cool. Uh, but, but still, it was very limiting. You had to really work with the limit limitations. So with Flash Player 11, released just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we have hardware accelerated 3D, and which is really cool, and which should really interest you guys as well if you want to push your stuff onto the web. Uh, so now we have millions of triangles that we can uh, display instead, and we have a full programmable pipeline, which means that we can use whatever shading stuff you, you want to do, essentially. And it's similar to WebGL, which a lot of people are familiar with, uh, which is sort of like a competing technology, but or competing in, in the sense that an open technology like WebGL can be competing. But, um, but the, flash, uh, the Flash player is more sandboxed, which on one hand means that it's limited slightly more than WebGL. On the other hand, it means that it's more secure. And as some of you may know, if you're into WebGL, 
Uh, Microsoft has said that they won't support it because it's not secure. Basically, we all know that's bullshit. But uh, but they cannot say the same about Flash. So in the end, at, in the end of the day, if you want to target a lot of users, Flash is what what you're going to have to use. I don't mind. I like Flash, but I know a, peop a lot of people don't like Flash. I'm a pragmatic guy. I like a lot of technology, but Flash is actually good, regardless of what Steve Jobs said. So, okay, so what is a Way 3D? It is a real-time 3D engine, uh, so you can use it for games or for whatever, really. Uh, and it's Stage 3D Accelerator. So Stage 3D is the name of the hardware acceleration API in, in uh, Flash Player. It is simple, flexible. This is the sales mumbo jumbo. Uh, but <laughs> the important thing is that it's open source, and there's a large community, not large in the sense that the Blender community is large, because the Blender community is huge for an open source piece of software. Uh, and we are very niche software. But there are a lot of users, and we have uh, active forums, and people go on there and answer people's questions, etc. And people do some really cool stuff with it uh, now with the new version as well. So this is uh, just a screenshot. I'm going to show the actual production as well because it's really worth it. So this is built using a way 3D. Uh, for Nissan by uh, Digitas uh, in France, in Paris. It's pretty cool. You can open the doors and stuff. You can change the colors. I can't remember that. Cool. Right, change the color. There we go. Pretty cool. I mean, we, I, I don't take credit for this, except I wrote, we wrote the engine. But I mean, these are the guys that, uh, Digitas are the guys that actually used it and polished it, and it's really nice. Look at this. So we have these. Uh, the lights are really cool. Yeah, this is really cool. So this is what people do with our technology now. So, but to, to help in games development, because as we, as we enter the hardware accelerated realm, a lot of people are interested in actually creating games for the web. Uh, before with the 4,000 or so triangle limit, it was really hard. I mean, that's, you, Jonathan would say, that's what you put in a character, in a single character. Uh, to, to build an entire you know, world <laughs> with 4,000 triangles, it's extremely limiting. Um, so now we're trying to uh, accommodate for uh, this new interest from the game industry. So, okay, I'm sorry for the graphics, but this is actually a really nice rendered in Blender uh, diagram of the OA3D platform. But the, the, you can see the text, so that's fine. So OA3D is the uh, rendering engine that we've been um, building for, maintaining for like five years, uh, and, and you saw examples of uh, a moment ago. We also ha have a file format called AWD uh, and some tools like Blender to, to, use, to export uh, for that file format. We have a new thing called Away Physics and another new thing that kind of builds upon all of these called uh, the game tools. So Away Physics is a separate library, but it's really tightly integrated. Uh, it's built uh, or based on the Bullet Engine, so it's actually a port of the Bullet Engine which is open source, as you know, and used in Blender, for instance, and is also used in movies like 2012 and uh, games like uh, Grand Theft Auto. It's a really uh, impressive physics engine. Um, and it's alpha right now. It's actually, we're using the C code, uh, so, which is cross-compiled. It's using alchemy which is something that um, Adobe, it's a technology that Adobe has. Uh, so it's cross-compiled and then wrapped in, in a nicer API that is more ActionScript-like. I'm just gonna show a demo of what, you, what some people have done with it. So this is, um, this is using OA physics. Wow, you never know what the color of the car will be. It actually changes, I just noticed now. But this is, so this is using um, triangle mesh physics, which is actually like the, the best that you can get if you want 
detail. Um, the, the guy who programmed this is not, I mean, the, the camera is extremely annoying. Why is it not following? So, camera type follow. There we go. Yeah, let's, I just want to do the jump because that's very, see, as you can see, it's running in my browser, which is pretty cool. There we have the jump. Dish. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Another cool community thing that uh, uses the Away Physics library is this ragdoll thing where uh, they're using our skeletal animation system to animate him, but as soon as you hit him with a ball, uh, he transfers into ragdoll mode. So this is a community, this is a French guy who did this and posted it on our forums. And I like to just shoot him for hours. <laughs> I particularly love this one. Yeah. Maybe I'll just do this for the rest of my time. <laughs> I don't think I could. I don't think I could entertain you more than. I should have kept that for last, I guess. So that's away physics and use. Um, Went too far, there we go. So uh, AWD is the file format. Uh, that is my little baby, I've designed it. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, in Blender we have the blend files. Uh, and blend, the, the format is actually very impressive. But on the web and for, um, to transfer stuff, um, it's, there, there aren't any real good file formats. A lot of people like Collada. Collada is huge, so that's a huge problem. Um, a lot of people use 3DS and stuff like that, but those are very limited in feature. So we decided to create our own. Uh, so it's called AWD, which stands for Away Data. Uh, it's compact format, uh, and it's free and open source, so the, all the tools are open source, and all the, uh, the, the file format specification is open. And the, the important thing here for the rest of my talk is that it's user expandable. It's also backwards and forwards compatible like the blend files. Uh, and right now we are uh, supporting Blender and Maya. We have exporters for both and more are coming as well. And then finally this thing called Away Game Tools. So this is the recent addition. It's uh, sort of like a general purpose uh, suit of utilities for game development. Um, so things like parsing game maps, that's something that all games want to do. Uh, input context management, like how do you map keys to certain actions, that's something that all games want to do. So we're trying to simplify those common game tasks so that you can build your own engine on top of this. So I'm just going to show you uh, a little game demo using this. And this is the one that I built in 30 minutes using, uh, obviously not the artwork wasn't built in thir uh, 30 minutes, but all the code for it was. Ah, I broke it. Sorry. Let's let's go with the unfinished one. Okay, so this is just my tiny little game demo with a polar bear walking around. You can have him run. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it with both my hands. I'm just gonna put the mic down. So like I said, it's 30 minutes of code, so it's really, I mean, there are some bugs and stuff like that, but it's like the him jumping straight up. I don't know what that's happening. But the basics are, well, you can see what, it's, what it looks like. Here, I'm gonna fall down. We have some nice, nice things, like if you move the camera towards the wall, it doesn't bounce, it, it bounces off instead of fall, going through the wall, stuff like that. So how is this done? Or more importantly, um, how, how are we allowing people to do this? So uh, we have started de developing this Away Game Tools package, and my favorite 3D program is Blender, of course, so uh, that's where I started. So I'm just gonna take a look at the blend file for this. So there we have it. Okay, so this is the entire game level. Um, 
I don't know, I'm pretty short on time. I don't know if I can go over. I don't think anyone here knows, okay. So basically, um, this is the game level created in Blender. And there are a lot of things that you would do um, apart from just creating artwork when you want to design a game level. There are things like, well, you know this from the Blender game engine, but you, know, you want to put in physics objects and you want to put in spawn points and stuff like that. So that's what we're trying to do with this add-on for Blender and for a lot of other programs eventually as well. <clears throat> and um, the first thing that you'll notice is this tiny little panel over here that will allow us to create um, physics objects. So I'm just going to go and add a plane. See where that ended up? There it is. So right now, if I just have a plane somewhere, I'm just going to remove that, actually. Um, and I export this. That was the total export time for the entire level. This is the entire loading cycle. Well, the, the bear actually doesn't show up. That's expected. That's because I don't have a spawn point. So what I can do is I can just set my cursor. That's fine. Go into the add menu an AGT away game tools object, put a spawn point there. Export it again. Okay, so now it shows up, but it falls to the floor. So that's the problem. We have to create some physics uh, for this uh, game. So what you do is you add any mesh, really. I'm just going to add a plane, move it down. Going to scale it up a little bit, like that. And I'm going to make it into a mesh collider. So that puts it into wireframe mode, just so I know what, uh, what elements are physics objects and what are not. Uh, you could, of course, use the exact same mesh as the, the, the game level, but it's unnecessary to use that many polygons for the physics, especially when you're on a very limited platform like inside the browser. I'm going to export this again and hope that it doesn't crash because it runs out of memory. I think my exporter has some memory leaks. Yeah. So, uh, exactly. The neat thing about the format is that uh, it's user expandable, like I said. Extendable, sorry. So, okay, there we have him. You know, it's actually standing on my invisible physics plane now. And, of course, I'm not going to go th through and do all of it, but if we look at the finished one. So, that's how you would sort of build your um, using physics objects. So. It doesn't run through uh, the spikes, etc. Uh, so yeah, so the, the file format itself can define a lot of things. Like the, the polar bear was also done with this file format. It, it's fully skeletally animated. Can you say skeletally? Can you, is that an adverb? <laughs> um, and it's um, user extendable, which means that we could put attributes on any object. Uh, so what? I'm actually using here is a tiny add-on to add the buttons, uh, but the actual file writing is completely vanilla. It's not specific to Away Game Tools. It's just the AWD file format, which allows a lot of um, extra things. So if we take one of these uh, physics objects right here and just go into custom properties, we can see that it has added a bunch of custom properties, and those get exported into the file, and the engine then uses those to know that this is, in fact, a physics object, and you know the friction of it and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's also this much nicer uh, interface uh, that the add-on adds to actually interact with, that, uh, with those properties, so you don't have to know what they're called, and you don't have to use the really slow 
ma uh, you know, means of adding and then editing and whatever. So it's all right here. Um, yeah. So that running this version. We're back to what you saw earlier. We can. Yeah. Can we use uh, what shades? So? Yeah. Um, and th this doesn't really show that, but you could, I mean, the, the polar bear could be uh, normal mapped. Uh, I didn't do that because I'm not really, I mean, I could do that, uh, but uh, it requires some more code. You have to load a normal map and apply it. Um, and, um, well, I, I created this in 30 minutes, so the point was to how quickly you can make it, not, uh, not to load all the eye candy. Um, but it, just to display some uh, examples of shading in, in a way 3D, this is something that I created as a sort of proof of, I guess, how does that look on a projector? It looks kind of okay, right? So that's running at 60 frames per second. Uh, in, in, in the Flash player, it could, of course, run it in the browser as well if I want to. Well, if I was able to open it in the browser, sorry. But yeah, so we have a lot of capabilities when it comes to shading and stuff like that as well. And here's just a tiny demo of the polar bear with normal maps and with uh, some fog applied and things like that. So there you can see him normal mapped and specular mapped and everything. His fur kind of shines a bit and stuff like that. He's really cute. I think we're, I think we're gonna make him our mascot. Yeah, so because I don't have time to go into uh, all the details of the, um, the, the, the tools in Blender, that's basically all I can show you guys. But um, if you have any questions, I would love to answer them about what I've just shown or about you know, the Flash 3D world in general or Away 3D in general or whatever. Okay. So the new H... HTML5. HTML5 is, uh, this is of course an ongoing discussion, but uh, HTML5 was supposed to kill Flash, uh, so it's not, it's not making things easier, I can tell you that much, because clients don't want Flash anymore. But the, the, the bottom line is that uh, HTML5 does not on its own provide any 3D capabilities. WebGL does, but it's only supported in Chrome and Firefox. Uh, and it's a moving target as well because it's not really fully developed yet uh, and it won't be until, well, a couple of years from now. And then you have the adoption rate and Internet Explorer are not going to support it at all. So you have all these issues if you want to go the WebGL route and we don't really have them. Of course, we have the issue of uh, graphics cards that are not supported and stuff like that. But look, to answer your question, HTML5 is not making things easier. Uh, they're also not doing exactly the same, uh, and even when they try to, they reach different results. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? How you can make uh, an application with a way 3D. Yeah, so um, the Flash platform is programmable using ActionScript. Uh, so what you do is you write ActionScript uh, and Away3D is an uh, ActionScript library. So it's sort of like Ogre 3D uh, in, for C++ in that it's an open source rendering engine. So you write code using the rendering engine to, uh, to, to, to render real-time graphics essentially. Sorry, what was? Oh, augmented reality. Yeah, so augmented reality is definitely something that you can do with Away 3D. A lot of people have done it already. Uh, Away 3D, I would guess, is actually the number one engine used for augmented reality uh, in Flash over the past couple of years since augmented reality become, became popular. 
uh, but with the new uh, hardware accelerated stuff, obviously that takes things to a new level. I haven't actually seen any augmented reality using the new 3D uh, hardware accelerated stuff, but it was only released three weeks ago, so it kind of makes sense. Why do I use Away 3D and not Paper Vision? Uh, I am one of the developers of Away 3D, so that that is <laughs> that, that is not a very good question to ask me. No, but seriously, um, obviously I I have always used Away 3D because I am one of the developers. But if 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 we would, I mean, if you would if you would rephrase the uh, question and ask why should you use why should one use Away 3D and not Paper Vision? Uh, the, the bottom line is that paper vision doesn't exist anymore. Uh, paper vision was, which was the first engine, 3D engine for uh, Flash, and which uh, Away 3D was actually forked off of uh, five years ago. Uh, Away, uh, paper vision uh, stopped being developed about two years ago, uh, and officially declared dead about a year or almost two years ago. So all of the core developers of Paper Vision have left the project for other endeavors. Uh, and um, they never had a Flash Player 10 version, which was their big promise. Uh, and now we're at Flash Player 11. So they're, 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 it just doesn't exist anymore. But unfortunately for us, Paper Vision, the word Paper Vision has become synonymous with 3D and Flash. Uh, so that's, we get that question a lot. So it's actually not a, it's not a bad question, but it's, uh, it, it is, um, well, I wish, I, I long for the day when people have forgotten paper vision. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it is uh, probably pretty obvious to everybody else that I just want to ask it anyway from an artist perspective. I am correct in assuming that uh, the way 3D, it only requires flash if the user has flash on his PC installed for it. Yeah. You can unlock everything you have done. Yeah. So, um, Away 3D runs on Flash, so you only need a Flash player, Flash player 11 uh, for this version. Yeah, it is really cool. It is actually really cool. You also need supported hardware, obviously, because it's hardware acceleration. So th that's, uh, that's one thing. And then to, I mean, what I have done now, I, I made a change in Blender and I reloaded an HTML page with Flash in it and it's updated. Obviously, I have written code behind that that does that. It is like 100 lines of code that I wrote using these tools uh, because Away 3D is, at the end of the day, a programmer's tool. Uh, so uh, the, the idea that we're trying to do with this is to uh, allow teams that consist of both programmers and, and, and artists to, to work together more closely. So the artist can define the level, it can model it, and can add the spawn points and the physics and all things. Uh, also things like um, checkpoints and all, all the game editing t stuff, but the programmer has to glue it together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's. I mean, again, it is a programmer's tool. I would love to create maybe some uh, some uh, simple viewer. That's something that we're discussing. But I mean, uh, something like this, which is a product display. This is like five lines of five lines of code. But we don't give that code to you because it is a programmer's tool. We should probably just give you that code. <laughs> but but it is really simple. Uh, we just. That's not what we're targeting. We're trying to, uh, but we could, and we should. And, and I was here last year, standing in this exact same spot, and I said that we would before, before I came next time. We would have this viewer that you could just load models in, and yet uh, we, lost, we lost the focus on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it works. Actually, it's really poor that you, the anti-aliasing is horrid on this display. It actually isn't that bad. It is the resolution. Something fucks it up. But it actually looks really good on my uh, screen if you want to come over and see it. No, so joystick input, uh, that's something that is uh, um, limited by the platform, obviously, uh, and 
Adobe has said that they want to, well, they haven't even demoed it working, but it's not in the Flash player that you download. So users, the, they have it in their labs, essentially. But it has all these security restrictions, like how could you, uh, why, how can a programmer listen to the input of a joystick uh, on a web page and not maybe, you know, steal the credit card information? You know, it's all this stupid, uh, obviously it's not based on anything, but they're really, really cautious about it. So it doesn't work yet, but they have demoed it working and it will be coming at some point. Uh, yeah. And using Blender to uh, yeah, make game levels, put uh, install points, and, and have these uh, game properties and, and uh, all that. Do you think it would make sense to, uh, or do you even see uh, a way 3D event format and all that as something that's actually uh, not even like Flash specific? And especially if you think of the Blender user interface, um, yeah. do you think it would make sense to uh, make like a common uh, game-making uh, interface add-on to, to Blender that works for many engines. So. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, th there are already a lot of blend, uh, Blender game engine properties, and we saw yesterday the, the Tor, what, what was the name, Tor Studios or whatever? Yeah, uh, so they demoed obviously using the built-in game properties, whereas we have chosen to have the separate UI elements. Um, but to answer your first question, could a way 3D be used for anything? Uh, not really, it, it is built for Flash. We have had some community ports to other languages like JavaScript and, and, and Haxi, which is a cross-platform language you can compile for uh, um, anything really. Um, and obviously, as do all technology, Flash is going away at some point. And at that point, I'm not gonna stop doing 3D programming. So at some point, <laughs> we're probably gonna move to something else. But I mean, there's like five or 10 years away. And we don't have, because it's an open source project, we're all doing it in our spare time. We don't have the resources to, uh, to uh, maintain several different game engines or on several different platforms. So our expertise and uh, what pays our bills is Flash. So that's where we, um, that's, that's where we, what we're doing, yeah. Anything else? For a way 3D? Uh, no, a way 3D is action script. A way 3D itself is not, it's not, I mean, it c might be hard to, uh, to grasp what it is, and I just take that for granted, and I'm very sorry. Uh, but a way 3D really is, 500 or so action script classes. It is an action script library, just like you would use, you know, libmv in Blender for, you know, the, the tracking. It is a library that you use in your software as part of your software to uh, to to render 3D, uh, and it is written in action script and it is for the Flash platform. So it doesn't really make sense to try to create an interface for any other language. Although if you you're talking about things like Lua which is really popular in the game industry. Uh, that is something that we might consider for a full game engine that we haven't announced, but that we are working on on top of everything. Um, so that there it might be interesting to have a really simple scripting language. But on the other hand, ActionScript in itself is pretty simple. Uh, so it doesn't have, it, it's not, well, the motivation behind Lua in the C++ en uh, uh, engine is that the designers shouldn't have to code C++. But in, in an action script language, that is not really, it, it doesn't really translate because it's not that hard to program action script as it is to program C++. Um, so we might not even do it there, but we could maybe, I don't know. If, yeah. More questions? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, the Haxi port has not been, uh, this, is, this is a nice backdrop. The Haxi port has not been um, uh, translated or there has not been a Haxi port of the newest version, the, 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 the uh, GPU accelerated version. Uh, 
uh, but I'm sure that there will be because we have some community members which are really into Haxi and Away 3D. So if they want to use both, they have to do the ports themselves. So that's what happened uh, last time, and I'm sure it's going to happen again. Uh, I don't. I've never written a line of Haxi, so I don't really. I, it's, it's harsh to say I don't care, but I mean I don't. I don't really. I don't keep track of what's going on in that community, so I'm not really sure. Is it possible to use it in an Android device? The answer is uh, soon. Um, there, is a, there is a technology by Adobe called Air that lets you use Flash to create Android and actually iOS applications. Uh, people think that, that Apple hate Flash. Uh, they don't actually do that. They, they, they don't, they have some political reasons to, uh, to counter Flash, but they, um, um, Adobe has technology to cross-compile Air applications that are written in Flash to iOS and, and Android. And um, it works really well, uh, and you may have seen a game on the App Store. I, this is Adobe's standing example, but uh, they have, um, there's this game called Machinarium. I don't know if you've seen it. It is a 2D game, adventure game. And it is, uh, has been, it was pretty big before, but since it got on the App Store, it's been huge. It was like the number one paid app for a couple of weeks, and they made a lot of money, and people loved the game. And it was actually built using Flash, and it's on the iPad. So uh, it's definitely possible to create Flash applications for the iPad and Android phones. But the thing is, the Flash Player 11 hardware acceleration is not in there yet. It's not in uh, Air 3.0 but there are 3.1 and 3.2 betas out already. Uh, none of them have support for it yet, but it might be coming in one of them. Uh, we, we don't know, or those who know don't get to tell. Uh, so, um, so it is definitely coming. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.